Hey everybody, it's March 24th, it is a Wednesday, and it's time for us to study together. It's time for a Devo. I hope you had a great week. If you were out on spring break this past week, I hope you had a great break, a great rest, maybe a great vacation. Uh, if maybe you didn't have spring break, maybe it was just a regular school week for you. I hope you've had a great week, and I hope that this week is is a great week for you. That, that the things you're doing, the things you're learning, maybe sports or clubs or bands or choirs, or maybe it's just life in its routine, going to school, going home. I hope things are great. I hope you're enjoying the season of your life. Hope this week has been a good week for you, and I hope it continues to be a great week for you. We're going to talk for a little bit about what we studied this past week in our family devotionals, in our readings. We are talking about the book of Proverbs this, this next couple of weeks. The whole, the whole quarter is on the wisdom literature, Job, Psalms, Proverbs, and Ecclesiastes. But... And the next little bit, this week and the next week, and I think the one to follow, we're, we're all going to be in the book of Proverbs. And this week's study on the book of Proverbs centered around one idea, and that's the concept, the subject of purity. Do you know what purity means? H how would you define purity? Sometimes we define words by what they're not. So purity, sometimes we say, well, purity is anything that's not stained. Uh, it's not soiled. It's not dirty. It's clean. And so we, we talk about purified water. Well, it's free from any of those kind of germs and contaminants. It tastes good. We think about a pure white shirt. Pure, clean white. White as snow. No spots, no stains, no, no, no dirtiness, no dirt or contaminants on it. It is pure, clean, and white. God wants us as his people to be pure. And so Jesus said in Matthew 5, verse 8, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. And so if we want to see God, if we want to become more like God, then we're going to be pure in heart. And what we read this week in our devotionals, our weekly devotionals, walked us, uh, walked us through the subject of purity. So I wanted to share some thoughts I had with you relating to what we studied and what we read. And, uh, and I hope it will be just a good time of, of just kind of reminding and refreshing and reviewing some things we, we talked about and we read, the things we went through. So, purity, free from stain, free from soil, free from things that are, that are dirty and contaminating. That can be true of water. It can, tr it can be true of clothes. It can be true of our hearts and our lives. Hearts that are free from sin and evil things of the world that just make us think bad thoughts or to speak evil words. Pure, clean, godly hearts. Now, where does it all begin? Have you ever had in your house something that really smells? Like it stinks, maybe in your room. You haven't cleaned your room in a while and it stinks. Or <laughs> if you have a car like mine with, with little kids, sometimes things get under, thrown under the seats or things fall in the, in the little cracks on the sides. And then like after a while, it starts stinking. You smell, you smell. And so you get the Febreze and you spray down your room and you spray down the car. And it works for a little bit, but then boy, that smell comes right back. You know what you have to do? You have to locate the stink. You have to locate the source of the stink. What, what is stinking? And so you go under your bed and you're ripping around and you, and you look through the car and finally you find it. Maybe it was a thing of food that didn't get put away or maybe some, some, uh, some dirty clothes that haven't been washed in a long time, but then you found it. And once you find it and you get rid of it or you clean it, things can start to smell good again. Well, where, where's the source? Of our thoughts. Where, where, where's the source of our words and our actions and the way that we live? Did you know that in the book of Matthew chapter 12 and in Matthew chapter 15, Jesus twice says that it's not what we put in our bodies that contaminates us. It's what flows out, not from our stomachs, but from our hearts. The heart is what determines what we speak and what we do the heart is who we are the heart is is essentially our thoughts solomon said as a man thinks so he is in proverbs 23 and in verse 7 so evil and impure and, and wicked and immoral and and just godless thoughts 
will result in evil and immoral and godless living. But if we think good and pure and wholesome and right thoughts, then the odds are, the result is, we will speak and live good, wholesome, godly lives. It's all about protecting the heart. You've got to be careful about what you let into your heart. That, that's the key to winning purity is starting with heart, guarding and protecting your heart. Who you are is found in your heart. And so you have to be careful to guard what you let in, to guard what influences are affecting and influencing your heart. One of the key things these Proverbs bring up, Proverbs 7, Proverbs 5, Proverbs 9, as it talks about the, the tempting uh, the tempting invitations that will come from people to do things, to say things, to think things that we should not do. It talks a lot about, about the relationship between a man and a woman. God made us the way that we are. He did. And so he made, he made us, and he made man, and he made woman, and there's a special relationship that man and woman have. A romantic relationship. You, you've likely seen it with your mom and your dad, and there's a special a special connection they have. Well, within that special relationship, there's a desire. There's a desire. Men attracted to women and, and women attracted to men and a desire to be close to one another, a desire to be romantic with one another, a desire to, to, to make a life with one another. But those desires have to be placed under control. Place it under control, which means I'm not going to do things with someone else. I'm not going to speak certain words that may be rude or, or filthy or gross. I'm not going to think certain thoughts about someone that, that I'm, I'm not married to, thoughts about them that would be inappropriate. And then even with our bodies, I'm not going to do things. I'm not going to cross lines. I'm not going to try and and do things that would be inappropriate with someone that I'm not married to. I know this is a deep discussion, a lot for you and your moms and dads to get into, more than what we can do here in a simple video, but I'll tell you this, that purity in a lot of these Proverbs is rooted in that romantic relationship between a man and a woman, and there's gonna be a lot of invitations you're gonna get in life. Invitations, maybe with, with someone that you, that you like at school, maybe with someone that you are going on a date with, it may be simply an invitation from a friend to, to watch certain videos that seem to suggest some kind of a romantic, uh, very intimate kind of, of setting. We have to be on guard. Purity doesn't happen by accident. Purity is a product of our choices. We choose to be pure. We think pure thoughts. We speak pure words. We do. We live a pure life. It starts in the heart. So much of it is wrapped up in that, and we have to realize that now, even as a young person, you have to realize that, that when it comes to the relationship of a man and a woman, we have to be very careful. We have to be on guard because there's going to be a lot of invitations to do things, to think things, to say things in that subject that we should not engage in. God has given us a special way, a special place to be able to enjoy all those feelings, all those emotions, and that's found in marriage. And for many of you, that's, that's a long way off. And so we have to know now, we have to start now, we have to decide now that when those temptations arise, to think certain thoughts, to say certain words, to, to do certain things with someone else, that we're just not going to go down that path. Did you read the story of the fly on our... Saturday study. It's a good story. It's, it's a good analogy that, that there were two flies and they were buzzing around and they came across some fly paper. You know what fly paper is? It's a trap. It's a sticky, sticky trap. And so there it is. And so the flies came and they went right by the trap. The one said to the other, hey, I bet you I could get one leg on that trap. And it says, no, don't, don't, don't do that. Watch, watch, watch. So we put it on. Oh, and he pulled oh, and he got it off. He says, hey, I bet you I could get two legs on that trap. His friend said, stop, stop. I don't want you to do this. Don't try it. That's dangerous. And he says, ah, watch. And so we got both legs on. Oh. And he pulled and he pulled. And, oh, it was hard. And he pulled and he pulled and he flapped his wings and he got him off. Got 
himself and he says, I'll bet you I could get all four legs on the trap. His friend said, please, please don't do it, don't do it. And he got all four legs on the trap. And he pulled, and he pulled, and he pulled, and it didn't matter how hard he tried, he was stuck. And that was it. Because you know what happens to flies who get stuck on the fly trap? They die. That's the end of the story. The principle is, is what the psalmist says in Proverbs, oh, I'm sorry, Proverbs 4, what the Proverbs says. In Proverbs 4, beginning verse 14, do not enter the path of the wicked, avoid it. Do not pass by it. Turn away from it and pass on. Don't see how close to the line you can get. Don't see how, how far you can go, how close to, to, to danger, how close to wrong, how close to breaking the rules as you can get without breaking the rules. That's that fly who's putting his hand on the fly paper. Because guess what? If I'm trying to get as close to wrong as possible without crossing the line, without getting in trouble, I'm still pursuing things that are wrong. Wrong's over here. And if I say, I'm going to get as close to wrong as possible without going over, where, where, where's my life headed? What am I pursuing in my thoughts, in my actions, in my words? I'm pursuing things that are wrong. The odds are I'm going to end up doing something that I don't want to do. I'm going to end up crossing the line. But God's over here. And God wants us to pursue things that are right and pure and holy. And when I pursue God, I'm staying away from the things that are evil. I'm going the opposite direction of things that are wrong, that are hurtful, that are sinful. Where, where is your life going? It's the question. Don't pursue things that are wrong. Don't get close to things that are wrong. Look and listen and learn. Be wise. Be discerning. In our, in our Monday a lesson, we talked about from Proverbs 9 about, about being discerning, about having your eyes open of stopping and thinking and, and thinking things through because there's going to be a lot of invitations from your friends, from your peers, from people all around the world, even online, who try to encourage you to do things you should not do, to go places you should not go, to watch things, to listen to things you have no business letting into your life. And you have to be discerning. You have to see you have to think. You have to stop and consider, is this what God wants me to do? Is this helping me pursue <laughs> pursue God? Or is it pursuing the world, pursuing sin, pursuing danger? Stop and think. Because as we wrap this study up on Tuesday, in Proverbs chapter 7, there's a, there's a young man. There's a young man, and he he wasn't he wasn't thinking. He wasn't thinking at all, because he went down the wrong path. There's some places we just don't go. We don't go. He went down an alley to a certain lady's house. He must have known who lived there, or he must have known that was not the place to go. But he went, and he went by her house. There's some places we don't go. Some internet sites we don't click on. Some games that we don't play. Some parties we don't attend. There's some places we don't go because we know what's going to be there. We know what we're going to find. And he was out at the wrong time. It's in the middle of the night. He should have been in bed. He should have been asleep. But instead, it's the middle of the night. It's not wrong to stay up late, especially if your parents allow it. But that's also when a lot of crimes happen because it's dark and I can hide it and I can conceal it. And so it's dark. He's at the wrong place at the wrong time. And then she appears and she has this invitation. I want you to come and I want you to have a great night with me. And instead of turning away, turning away and walking away, going back home, he listens and he lingers and he waits. And the more she pleads and the more she pleads, he gives in. He thinks he's just like that fly. He's just going to put one leg on, two leg on. But I can pull away any moment. I can stop at any moment. And the end of Proverbs 7 says that young man loses his life. An, ear, an arrow pierces his liver and he's killed. That's what happens when we flirt with danger. That's what happens when we're not thinking. 
when we're really easy and casual with danger, with sin, when we think I'm going to get as close as possible without going over, I'm going to try, I'm going to get as close as possible without breaking the law, without disobeying my parents, without breaking uh, God's laws. Watch out. One leg after another, you end up getting caught. And that's not the life God has called us to. He doesn't want us to get as close to danger without giving in. He doesn't want us to... You think about Adam and Eve. I don't want you camping out and sleeping under the tree of good of uh, good and evil. There's all these other trees. There's all these other blessings. Go somewhere else. What wisdom would there have been when God told Adam and Eve, don't eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil for them to camp out under that tree, to have a picnic under that tree. But they're going to be tempted because it's right there. But God gave them all these other trees. God gave them this entire garden to enjoy. If they knew that was there and that was a danger, they should have avoided it completely. And it's the same thing with us. If we know there's certain places we don't go, don't get close to that. Right? Certain websites I, sh I shouldn't click on, then don't, don't get close to it. Don't follow friends who, you know, share that website and may share something with you. Certain videos you shouldn't watch, well, then don't watch clips of that video on YouTube. Certain music you shouldn't listen to, well, don't hear clips of it on Spotify or iTunes. Stay far away. Keep yourself from danger. Purity is about protecting our hearts. If we want to live pure lives, if we want to speak pure words, then we have to think pure thoughts. And that begins with the heart. Proverbs 4.23, guard your heart, for out of it flows the issues, the meaning purposes of life, the wholeness of life. I want to share something with you, something with you from uh, from this week. This whole week is about purity, purity in our bodies, purity with our words, and purity with ultimately with our life. In many ways, we start out kind of like this. We're a nice, clean, pure sheet. Nothing on it. There, there, there is nothing on this. It is as pure and bright white as snow itself. And that's our heart. And we begin, and we're just so pure. Pure and innocent and clean. That's how God made us. Pure. But then along the way, we get tempted to, to see some things, to watch some things, to listen to some things that are dark, that are from the world. What happens when we let that in? What happens when we don't say no to watching those videos or no to, to listening to that music or no to, to letting those thoughts into our minds? Well, you know what happens? A lot of people say, I can handle it. I can watch it. I can watch those videos, even though they have some really impure scenes of people doing things with their bodies I shouldn't do, or they use certain words, but I know I shouldn't really use those words. I can filter it out. I can filter it out. It's not going to bother me. Right, here's our experiment. Let's take something dark and let's filter it through. Ready? I'm going to pour it straight on through. Ooh. Hold on. <laughs> okay, I dropped my, dropped my heart here. I want you to be able to see it. Okay, I'm going to hold this up here. Can you see? I'm going to pour it straight through. And there it goes. Okay. You might not have seen it. It was kind of hard for me to hold it. But it filtered straight through. Went straight through the napkin. It's on my hand. <laughs> Went straight through into the trash. Now, I filtered it through. The liquid is no longer on this, this napkin. Do you think it's still going to be white? It filtered it, right? There's no more liquid. It went right through it, but it left a stain. It left a deep, dark stain on this napkin, a stain that will never go away. Not without a lot, a lot, and a lot. It may never go away. You see, well, I, can, I can watch certain movies. I can listen to certain music. I can, I can think certain thoughts, 
I can hang out with certain people and it's not going to bother me. I can filter it and maybe I will. Maybe I'll filter it through. But every time it leaves a stain, it leaves a stain on our hearts. And it's out of our hearts that what we think or that what we say and what we do comes. If we want to be pure, if we want to live a life that is pure, we've got to guard our hearts. We've got to be so careful about what we let in. So let me offer this challenge for this week, for the rest of this week. There's a lot of things that's going to come across your eyes, a lot of things that will come across your ears. You can't always control what you're going to see. People coming right in front of your path. You can't always control what you're going to hear. People say certain words and you can't. You can't control it, but you know what you can control? Control. I don't have to look at that. I saw it. I don't have to look at it. I'm not going to dwell on that. I heard something. I'm going to put it right out of my mind. I'm not going to think about that. I'm not going to entertain that thought. I'm not going to keep it fresh in my mind. And the things I do have choices over, the things I watch, the videos I watch, the games I play, the things I watch on YouTube, the music I'm listening to, I get a say in that. And my goal above all things is to please King Jesus and to be pure like him. And so I, I'm not going to let things into my heart that's going to stain and soil my heart with the thinking of Satan and the darkness of the world. I'm going to think pure thoughts. I'm going to let good things in. I'm going to keep all the things of the world out. I'm not going to watch it. I'm not going to listen to it. I'm not going to entertain it. But instead, I'm going to fill my life with what is amazing, the beautiful, holy, building, helpful words of God. Guard your hearts. Be so careful about what you let in. It'll make all the difference. So we do that with me this week. Let's guard our hearts. Protect our eyes. Protect our ears, and in so doing, we're going to protect our lives, guarding our hearts. Thank you so much for studying with me today. Hope you had a great, great, uh, great time studying through Proverbs this past week. Keep on reading, keep on praying, keep on studying. Until next time, Ricky's going to take up our study this next week. Have a great week, and we'll see you again soon.